This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Crossfire Bullet. Model number 2430BH. Okay, I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work. So you have power stabilizers here. Um, there's one switch for the front stabilizers, one switch for the back. I'll show you those when we get to them, okay? The switches, I mean. You have a refrigerator and some a service to work on. Power, of course. Um, you have a power awning with LED strip plus outside speakers. This is your water heater. Right now it's empty because it's winterized. It's bypassed and it's empty. Um, this works on both gas and electric. I'll show you the switches when we get inside, okay? Always make sure there's water in the water heater tank before you turn it on. Okay, so right now, like I said, it's bypassed and empty. All right. Here we have some storage. This is a sprayer for spray ports that are on the trailer. There's probably two of them. I'll show them to you as we go by them. Uh, now this, this here, this crank here, you can go to the off-door side, uh, to the stabilizers on the off-door side, and you'll see a shaft with a pin through it. You can actually crank the stabilizers manually if you have to, to get yourself out of, a, out of trouble, okay? So there's um, a way to get them up and down even without power. Now your, the other crank has a three-quarter inch hex on it, and that's going to be used if this power tongue jack was to ever fail, right? You can just pull the plug off the top, put the crank on there and crank it manually. So two ways to get yourself out of trouble. You have uh, two LP tanks with uh, uh, automatic changeover regulator. You have a deep cycle marine battery and that's the kill switch for it. This is just a hookup here if you wanted to add a solar panel to charge your battery. It's just an option. Okay. Over here, these are the switches for your stabilizers, front and rear. Okay. This is your power cord. This also has a solar panel on it. So that's your solar controller right there. Okay. So it'll send the, convert the energy from the sun and send it right to your battery. Okay. This is how you, this is your water station here. So city water hookup is the most common way to get water to the trailer. Just hook up the hose and you're already set to go. If you're camping someplace that doesn't have city water, you can pre-fill this your fresh water tank. And then when you get to uh, get to wherever you're going, you can pump it out of the tank using the onboard pump, which I'll show you the, the switch for that when we get inside also. But either way you you'll you'll have fresh water. Um, your slide room, this side room, just so you know, it's called an Accu slide. There are different types. This one's an Accu slide. This is where your 30 amp shore cord goes on, the one I just showed you that's in the compartment. Okay. Uh, this is a black tank flush right here. So if, after you dump your black tank, which is the v black valve right here, and then there's the gray, the blackest toilet water and waste. So after you dump that, you can leave the valve open, hook the hose at the dump station right onto here, turn it on, it'll, it'll flush out your black tank, spray off the sensors, get it, get it nice and clean, so it's a, it's a good thing to do. Uh, this is just a, a port where you hook up that sprayer I showed you, All right? This is another port for that sprayer right here, okay? You're pre-wired for backup camera, if you ever want to add one on, it's pre-wired. And while we're looking up, remember the manufacturer states you should inspect your roof every 60 days. Um, go up on the roof, have somebody go up there, look at all the sealant, uh, make sure there's no cracking or separation where water could get through. Um, look at the roofing attachments and roofing material, make sure that it wasn't damaged by, uh, you know, low branches or road debris, that sort of thing, okay? 
part of your general maintenance. Okay, so we go inside here. Okay. So, here's your control panel right when you get in the door here. So you have your slide room right here, in and out. You have your power awning right here, in and out. Never let, leave that out unattended. Always make sure you roll it in. You have lights here. Um, your water pump I told you about to pump water out of the freshwater tank is right there. You also use that to winterize the trailer. To light your water heater on gas is right here. And that's the fault light right there. And then there, to turn it on electric here. Always make sure there's water in the water heater tank before you turn it on. That's very important. Um, then you have your levels, battery, fresh water is empty, black. You only have one black tank, so you disregard the second one, so on and so forth. It graduates up in one-third increments. Your thermostat is very simple. You just hit the mode button and you scroll through it until you uh, find what you want. Uh, fan, air conditioning, uh, or, or heat. Um, if they do give you an option for fan speed with the air conditioning, you always choose auto. That's the best way to go. Okay, this is your Furion. Let me get this off of here so we can see. I don't think you can see it very well. I don't think. Well, maybe I'm just going to just talk over it because I don't, I didn't bring anything to break that loose with, so. <laughs> Anyways, you'll have to take my word for it as I describe it to you at this point. Um, we'll get that off for you later. You can take it off when you're ready, whatever. But it has AM, FM radio. It has Bluetooth. So you stream from your you know, phone or tablets. It has a USB drive, so you can put your uh, USB stick right in there with all your albums on it, whatever. Take them with you. HDMI in. In case you want to go into the system with a, you know, like a portable Blu-ray player or something. And um, also it has two speaker zones, uh, one and two. Uh, one is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer, okay? So it does everything you need. Of course, your TV would go here, and here's the, it's got a mounting plate bracket for it, so you can hang a swing out bracket on it. Um, okay, let's move on to... Okay, this is your, your microwave, works like any other microwave. Your range hood uh, just has a fan and a light in it. Okay, let me set. Then your range itself, you have three knobs here and for three burners. And then this was the, spar the sparker, of course. And then this one is the oven knob. So let me see if we got gas turned on here. Yeah, so it's that simple. Okay, the oven is a little different. There's a, a, a pilot light all the way at the back on the bottom. You're going to go to the oven knob and you go to the picture of the flame, the pilot light. You depress it, then you're going to light it, the pilot light. And then once it lights, you hold it for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. Then you're all set. You go to whatever temperature you want. When you shut it off, you have to, the pilot light goes out, so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. So, what else have we here? This is your power converter right here. This converts AC to DC power. Um, so, let me open this up here. You can see you got, when you're plugged into shore power, you've got regular um, circuit breakers like you'd see at home, 110 AC and they're labeled. Then, the power is converted to 12 volt DC. On this side, so you've got 12 volt fuses and they're labeled. Um, if they blow, you'll see them glowing through this tinted plastic here. Okay. Um, also, this is a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your battery up front needs and always keep it charged up. As long as you're plugged into short power, it'll always keep it charged up, okay? Um, bathroom. It's a typical RV bathroom. Nothing special about the sink or the shower. This is a uh, GFCI. Keep in mind, everything is... is um, uh, all the plugs, all the receptacles are wired through this GFCI. Now, the toilet has a flush pedal on it. Let me see if I can get you a picture of it. Right there. Okay. 
So when you pull into the campground, hook up your power and your water, your uh, black tank is empty. The black tank's directly below, right? So you put a dose of chemical in the bowl and you step on the pedal, hold it down so you put at least a gallon of water along with the chemical into the black tank below, then you're all set to use it. You can't use it dry, dry meaning without water or chemical in it. If you do that, um, it'll get clogged up and it's also the smell will be terrible. So you, you'll uh, definitely only not do it one time if you don't do it, but make sure you always put your chemical and water in there. Now this refrigerator is gas absorption. Okay, so it's very simple, on and off here, right? It says auto there, I know you can't read it very well, but it says auto, that's where you're gonna to wanna to keep it almost always. It means you, it automatically seeks out electricity, and if it can't find it, it'll automatically switch to gas. Or if you have a power failure at the campground at any time, it'll sense it and automatically switch over to gas. Now you can de dedicate it to gas that way, or that way, if you want, um, when you're pulling down the road, whatever, but generally auto is the way to go, okay? Also, this is your, can you set this up right here? I'll do it. This is the thermistor right here. Um, I'm gonna have to set this down for one second. Bear with me. It clips into this housing here. I don't know if you can even see it where, the way it is, but I just gotta do that for you. They did not. Okay, up, 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 up. So, let me get the camera back. So right there, um, you can see the sticker says the higher you go with it, the cooler it gets. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna have that in that clip, that little thermistor in the clip there and you push up as high as it goes, and that's pretty much where you're always gonna use it. If it starts to frost up or something, you can back it down, but usually you'll have it up all the way, okay? Let's get gas absorption refrigerator. Let me just shut it off for now. Okay. Um, you can drop the uh, posts or the, the pillars on this table, and you can set the, um, the top onto these cleats here, right? and then use the cushions to fill in the space, turn this into a bed. This device right here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green. If not, get it serviced. If it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, go up front, shut the gas off, figure out what's going on. If it beeps very slowly, same tone but very slowly, it's telling you that your battery's low. So keep that in mind. It should always be green. Alrighty. So, bedroom is typical. Uh, let me latch this in the right position here. Hold on. Okay. Um, you can hang a TV here when there's a mounting bracket back or plate there. You got an emergency escape window. You can pull up, pull up the bed, and it will. Uh, there's some storage underneath, so it's typical in that sense. Okay. Alrighty. So. I think that covers it. I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Uh, please remember to inspect your roof regularly every uh, 60 days or so, a few times a summer, and make sure that everything is in good shape up there. That should be part of your regular maintenance. And right now this, is, this trailer is winterized, so all the water has been purged out, replaced with antifreeze. The water heater itself is bypassed and empty, right? Uh, remember before you turn it on and the water heater on in in the spring or summer that you make sure the water heater tank is full with water okay that's important okay thank you